Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven. Today, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on bit depth and chroma subsampling so you can at least understand what the tools are for the job. The truth of the matter is I always default to the professionals. These are the people who use certain tools in certain situations. So if I was to shoot a sporting event, I would look at the gear that the sports, the high-end sport shooter was shooting. If I didn't know anything about portrait photography, I would study the gear that a portrait, a high-end portrait photographer was studying. Same thing with landscape. I always look at what the pros are using. When we look at the professionals in the motion picture industry, the vast majority of them prefer to have higher bit depth as well as better chroma subsampling. So let's talk about what those are and why they may not apply to us as commoners, people who shoot and publish on YouTube. First, let's talk about bit depth. What is a bit? A bit is a binary unit. In computer language, it's either a zero or a one. It's an arbitrary unit of value. So if you have a one bit file, that means it's either a zero or one. It's black or white. It's a yes or a no. And so in order for a computer to get more information, the idea is that more binary units are added to certain values. Eight bit means there are eight binary units in this particular calculation. And if you go through all the possible combinations of eight bit depth, so if you're looking at eight bits, there's 256 possible combinations. What that means is there are 256 shades of red, 256 shades of blue, 256 shades of green. And when you multiply those different shades together, we get 16.7 million different possible combinations of colors. So the bit depth refers to the number of binary units that can be multiplied to determine the total number of color shades for a particular file. 10 bit means there are 10 binary units. And if we go through and we do all the math, we can see that there's approximately a billion different colors. And 12 bit means there's approximately 68 billion different colors. Why is this important? It's because sometimes when we're shooting, if we get into a situation where we have a strange color like a sky, often there aren't enough shades in the file to determine the appropriate color and we start to see artifacts. The question I would ask you is, if you had to do a lot of color grading, would you want a raw file or would you want a JPEG? We're talking about stills. It's no brainer, you want a raw file. This is where a lot of the confusion comes in. You can definitely grade a JPEG image. There's just a lot more color information and brightness information in raw files and therefore the raw file is far more flexible in terms of grading. This is the heart of the matter when we're looking at chroma subsampling. Do you want a file that has more information in it or do you want to have a file that has less information? If you talk to a professional, a colorist, somebody who does this for a living, I do not know a single colorist, correct me if I'm wrong colorists if you're coming to, to this video, I do not know a single professional colorist that prefers 8-bit 420 over 10-bit 422. Talk about the type of color information in there. It's their job to grade it. It's their job to make things match. They want as much color information in there as possible. Another side note is that 10-bit 422 files that have more color information, those are gonna be larger file sizes. That's, that's the whole idea. There's more bits of information, therefore the file sizes have to be larger. So let's take a look how these various shades of color are assigned to individual pixels. When we're looking at a raw file, this would have a chroma subsampling of 444. So what do those numbers mean? Those numbers refer to how brightness and color information applies to eight pixels arranged in four columns of two rows. The first number refers to the brightness or the luma value. Because the human eye is more sensitive to brightness than it is color, every pixel in both rows gets its own brightness or luma value. The second number refers to how much color information is given to the top row of four pixels, and the third number is how much color information is given to the bottom row of four pixels. So, if we're talking about raw video, or 12-bit 444, every pixel gets its own brightness and color information. The term chroma subsampling literally means color under valuing. And the strategy behind this is to allow adjacent pixels to share color information in order to save file space. This lowers the color resolution of the file, 
but the benefit is its smaller file size. So when we're talking about what 422 means, this is that every pixel will get its own brightness value. And in the top row, there are only going to be two color values, which are now shared by adjacent pixels. The last two means that the bottom row of four pixels is now sharing two color values. When we're talking about 420, again, every pixel gets its own Luma value, but now there are only two color values available for the top row that are also now going to be shared for the bottom row because this last digit is literally zero. So what this means is that the pixels are now sharing color information for four adjacent pixels. Again, this is going to degrade the color information, but the file size is also going to be much smaller. So the heart of the matter is that 8-bit 420 is what most DSLR and mirrorless cameras are recording internally. There are a few exceptions, like the GH5. However, many models can record in higher chroma subsampling with an external HDMI recorder. High-end, dedicated video cameras usually have most of these options available for internal recording. Now, the truth of the matter is we're not going to see the differences in terms of output because we live mostly in an 8-bit world. Our monitors, like on our laptops, our phones, or even our televisions, the vast majority of them are only capable of 8-bit. But when you go to visit a professional colorist, it's more than likely that he has a 10-bit monitor. This is something that has to be purchased specifically for what they're doing. They are going to get far more variations of color in terms of grading, for green screening. All of this is going to make a huge difference when you're looking at something like on a movie screen. Okay, so do you need 10-bit 422 for something that you're gonna see on an iPhone? Probably not. Same for your, for your YouTube channel, okay? The trade-off isn't really worth it if you're trying to pump out YouTube videos and you don't care about grading. If you're doing commercial work and you have a client that is going to have grading on it, it is critically important that you can give it at least in 10 bit 422, if not higher. So, the reason why I'm going through all this information to tell you about uh, bit depth and chroma subsampling is because recently Atomos announced that the Ninja 5 is going to do ProRes RAW. ProRes RAW is a different creature, it probably deserves a different video. Just suffice it to say, there's a way to capture more color information on the Ninja 5 recorder but you're gonna have a lot more color information if you're shooting on something like the Z6. This is a dream come true for you know a couple thousand dollars. You can be recording raw video on a full frame 35 millimeter sensor. It's absolutely spectacular. It's going to give filmmakers a lot of options in terms of deliverables in chroma subsampling. So when we're talking about creating YouTube videos, casual videos, videos that we watch on our iPhones, my advice is shoot 8-bit 420, try to get it right in camera, do as little grading as possible if you're new to this. If you are doing high-end commercial work, something that might be seen on a large screen, something that might be, you try to sell it to Netflix, there's requirements. Something that you're giving to a customer, minimum 10-bit 422. So those are my thoughts on chroma subsampling. Try to get it right in camera if you're doing casual stuff. If you know that you're going to be doing some grading, try to get it in 10-bit 422. In any event, thank you guys so much for watching. Look forward to hearing the comments from the colorists. And I will see you next time.